Hi everybody, I am Jennifer, 3D animation professional and I am glad to see you again. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel as encouragement. Okay, today we're going to learn about helicopter engines. As you see here, these are good footholds to make it a lot easier to climb up on top to perform maintenance and pre-flight checks on the helicopter. It has two engines. These are General Electric T701C engines. They're referred to as turboshaft engines. It brings in air through the front, heats it up, and then compresses it, which then turns the shaft down the middle. That's why it's called a turboshaft engine. Now compare that to a turbojet engine on an airplane. It brings in air through the front, compresses it, heats it, and then instead of turning a shaft down the middle, it takes that hot air and shoots it out the back. This provides the thrust which pushes the airplane forward. Now that's the turbojet engine. But on a helicopter, it doesn't need that thrust to push it forward. That's why it uses two turboshaft engines to spin the shafts, which then work together to spin the main rotor blades. Now don't forget about the tail rotors on the very back. They're powered by the same engines. The two engines also turn a shaft that goes all the way back through the tail and up to the tail rotors. In the middle is the auxiliary power unit or APU for short. This is the small engine that provides electrical power for the helicopter. The APU is also responsible for starting up the main turboshaft engines, main rotors. In the centre we have our four main rotors. These are like the wings for a helicopter. When the air is flowing fast enough they will generate lift. Now you could generate more lift by spinning the blades faster. Some toy helicopters or drones work this way. However, this is not how full-size helicopters work. The rotors on the top spin at a constant speed. It doesn't change very much once the engines are running at full speed. For the Pavehawk, they spin at 258 revolutions per minute or rotations per minute. The way we generate lift is by changing the pitch of these blades. This affects the angle of attack. When you increase it, it generates more lift. Do it on all four of the rotor blades and this will cause the helicopter to go up. Decrease the pitch to generate less lift, which will cause the helicopter to descend or accelerate downwards. The turboshaft engines are spinning these four massive pieces of metal one way. This causes the main body of the helicopter to want to spin the other way. If we did nothing to stop this, the helicopter would spin out of control. This is the reason we have the tail rotors in the back. It provides a counter torque or in other words, a spinning force in the other direction. This stabilizes the helicopter so it's not spinning uncontrollably. If you come back here and look at these tail rotors, they are not perfectly aligned. They are tilted by 20 degrees. This makes it so that it also provides a small amount of lift in the very back of the helicopter. This helps counteract the extra weight of the tail. Another thing about the tail rotors is that each of the four blades can also change their pitch. This changes how much airflow there is. Increase the pitch if you want to turn to the left, and then decrease the pitch if you want to turn to the right. How about moving the helicopter? So, if we want to go forward or backward or left or right, how does that work? First, let me show you the mechanism in the center here. This is called the swash plate assembly. Here's the main swash plate, the rotor mast, and the four pitch control rods, which are then connected to each of the four rotor blades. The swash plate can move up or down. This directly affects the pitch on each of the four blades, but the swash plate can also will tilt from side to side. This means it will change the pitch more on some blades than on others. And if you watch it spinning around, each blade is always changing. Let's focus in on just this blade. When it's on the right side, it's relatively flat, but when it's on the left side, it's more angled, it's flat. Now it's angled, it's flat, now it's angled. This means unequal lift on different sides of the helicopter. This is used to maneuver the helicopter in different directions. So in short, the swashplate mechanism is one of the main ways that you can control a helicopter. One of the hardest things to understand here is something called gyroscopic precession. And this happens to anything that spins, but it's especially important to helicopters. So if you want to pitch the helicopter forward, you might think we need to apply more lift in the back of the rotor blades. But if we did this, it would actually roll the helicopter to the left. We apply force and it doesn't take effect until 90 degrees later. To actually pitch the helicopter forward, more lift needs to happen on the left side. And again, if you've never heard of gyroscopic precession before, this probably seems a little strange. This is the end of this video and thank you for watching.
If you found this useful, kindly, subscribe to our channel to encourage me. For any 3D animation you want to see, just put your inquiry in the comment and we will be back to you sooner. I look forward to seeing you in the next videos and bye.